and welcome to another episode of Ketonian Corner. I'm Jolene Hale, and I'm here with my co-host, John Davidson. Hello. So, what do we got going on today, John? Today, we're going to talk with Brittany, who's also known as Mama Low Carb. Mama Low Carb. Super excited about having this conversation. Um, So, we have been talking a lot about uh, food and food prep in the last few weeks. So, we thought this would be a great opportunity to bring somebody in who... um, She does this every day, um, so we can ask her some questions about uh, prepping some food and some great recipes. So So let's start, Brittany, with your your name, Mama Low Carb. Are you, obviously you're a mom and you're low carb, but are you kind of trying to hit with the getting your kids turned over to to a low carb, or did you just pick that name because you were just uh, looking for... uh, looking for a handle um so i haven't started uh my daughter on low carb yet um you know i try to do the best i can she eats mostly what i eat um but i don't hold back on certain foods for her she's only um 18 months right now um but so yeah i kind of just picked the name because i'm a mom and i was starting this low carb keto journey and the name just kind of stuck with me so (laughs) So you called it a low carb keto journey. So tell us, a, can you walk us a little bit more through that? Yeah. So um, my brother actually uh, runs the ketogenic.com website and he approached me, um, let's see, it's been about a year now ago that he approached me to try to do some recipes for the site because I have a um, a culinary arts degree and he thought maybe that could transfer well into um, doing recipes for them. So I kind of started, you know, experimenting and seeing what the diet was all about. And by that time I was not um, doing keto or low carb. I was just cooking some recipes for the site. Um, And then it was in February of this year that he invited me down to Tampa for the metabolic and therapeutics conference. And I cooked for the ketogenic.com table, uh, a bunch of appetizers and um, little snacks for the conference and hearing everyone's stories on how keto had, you know, changed their lives and helped them not only uh, their physical appearance, but um, their uh, medical uh, reasons as well. I decided I need to give it a go. So I've been keto since March of this year, and I have lost 40 pounds while doing that. So not to split hairs, but did you start low carb and then transition into keto, or did you just do keto straight out of the gate? I just, as soon as I got home from the conference, I actually moved into a new place and decided I was not buying any junk food, no carbs, no anything for the new place, and started cold turkey. Nice. Cold turkey. Man, I like yeah. it. So with um, with your recipes, you said you have a culinary degree. So you're probably better to answer this question than John and I, and we actually are asked this a lot. But do you find it to be easy um, to, to try to keto all of the recipes, or are there some that they're just not, you just can't convert? I think in the beginning, it was really hard for me to wrap my head around this concept of no carbs because being traditionally trained, you're, you know, you're taught using carbs all the time. Um, But I have found a new love for cooking since I've done this because it's made me more creative and I have been able to, you know, adapt a lot of recipes and make them keto. So I would say in the beginning, it was hard, um, but now you know, I'll be driving and, you know, think of a dish and I'm like, well, how can I make that keto? And it just comes to me a lot easier now. So you've got some tradi- some some type of framework in place now that you understand the principles, you're able to start adapting things? Right, yeah. So, yeah, it walk, took a little while. an example. Like, uh, so we, so if, depending on when you're listening to this, we just had Thanksgiving. So did you... Uh, were you play, did you play a role in your Thanksgiving? Yeah, I actually did um, a Thanksgiving meal for ketogenic.com. They asked me to come up with three dishes. And so I did um, 
a green bean casserole, which the traditional green bean casserole has, you know, cream of mushroom soup and thing. It's all kind of canned food and um, carb loaded. So I was able to adapt that and make that one keto. And then I also did a stuffing, which fathead dough has become kind of my signature thing, I guess you would say. And I was able to make a bread out of fathead dough and turn that into stuffing. And then I did a butter, um, a butter roasted uh, turkey breast. Mm. So from a time perspective, uh, you know, if you, if you would have done a Thanksgiving dinner like that before and now the fact that you were doing a keto version, what do you, what do you think the, did it take longer to do the keto or is it about the same? Or? I would say it's about the same. It's just changing your thought process into how can I make this keto. So once you get past that learning curve of those principles, then it's not, not too much different from a time perspective? Right. So John and I um, have had a few podcasts um, about meal prep and like mass prep for our meals. So when, I mean, I know that you do, um, you know, the, the recipes and stuff for your brother's website, but for just your home life, do you do any sort of meal, meal prep? Uh, so like for me, I do mine all on Sunday. I cook everything for the week. Um, do you do anything like that? So I just started in the last few months, um, some people locally had approached me that they would like um, me to make keto meals for them. Um, So beforehand, before when I first started the diet, um, I did not meal prep. Now that I have six people that I meal prep for, I just add more and I meal prep for myself and my husband as well. So we, um, I, I do it two days a week because I have so many people to do it for. I meal prep on Sunday and then on Wednesdays. Okay. So do you cook everything on Sunday and Wednesday, or do you just uh, prepare the meals and then cook them each day? Um, I cook the meals on Sunday and Wednesday, and then they're just ready to reheat for those people and then for us as well. Nice. Okay. So then do you do the like a big box store, like a Costco or Sam's? Um, not currently. I have been looking into that to try to save, you know, and be more cost effective. Um, but I just, I'm kind of just starting this, you know, meal prep journey and seeing where it takes me. It kind of took off really fast. <laughs> it started with one you person. Planned, huh? <laughs> what well, I, ha- I have a crush on Costco. <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> by me um we have like a sam's club and a gfs i don't know if you're familiar with those yeah we've got a gsf uh, gfs whatever it is but we but uh we've we've got all three of those actually oh okay we're we're lucky so so twice a week you go through and then do you like look at look at what people's needs are and then try to build a macronutrient ratio that fits them or you just pretty much mass prep the same thing for everybody and take it or leave it I mass prep the same things for everyone at this point um, because, like I said, it started with one person and they kind of told a friend and told a friend, so it got a little bit bigger than I had expected. Um, But, yeah, it's the same meals for everyone. There might be a variation if there's an ingredient that someone doesn't um, like, but other than that, they're all the same. Wow. Man, we need you to move to Illinois. No kidding. (laughs) I am in Illinois, actually. (laughs) Well, that's that's right, because we were were in the airport together coming back the same same flights. But I need you to move closer to us. (laughs) Central Illinois. (laughs) So so when you've gone through this and you started to do this mass prep and you're kind of moving through, how do you kind of go through planning what is – going to maybe last to be reheated versus something that, you know, let's say needs a crispy crust on the outside. So how do you kind of take that into consideration? I think that kind of my background helps with that as well. I guess I don't really think that um, thoroughly, but I guess it's probably always in the back of my mind if it will reheat. Um, For instance, 
Last week I made um, zoodles and meatballs and I was thinking to myself, you know, will this reheat nice or will it be watery from the zucchini? Um, And I kind of just took a chance and they're learning with me. And I said, you know, if this doesn't reheat, then, you know, let me know. But otherwise, you know, I do a lot of bunless burgers for them and, um, you know, chicken dishes and things like that that tend to reheat well. Yeah, so zucchini noodles, you just don't quite cook them as much, things like that. Right. Yeah, there's, I mean, there's some, you know, ways to cook things so that they do heat up a little bit better. Um, Like the zoodles, I kind of just, you know, quick heated them through and tossed them in some olive oil and garlic, and then that was it for that. Do you have, um, do you have a website or anything that you have uh, your recipes on, or is this just something that you do? As a side um, so thing. These are on ketogenic.com. And then I also post them on my Instagram and my Facebook, which is Mama Low Carb. I'm working on a blog. I just haven't have it. I don't have it up and running quite yet. Well, I think this day and age, Facebook and those kind of taken over the blogs anyway. So yeah. Right. Yeah. Instagram is fantastic with, you know, becoming having connections and meeting all these people and getting good feedback for your recipes. And see, I, I, we, we, we talk about this all the time. Like I'm, I'm social, social network deprived or whatever. I just, I have, he doesn't do it. I have no Instagram account or anything. And I, everybody tells me how great it is. I really should probably get on the bandwagon one of these days, but till yeah. then it's like making mayonnaise. <laughs> one day I'll do it, I'm sure. <laughs> and speaking of making things, um, so with your recipes, are they, what would you say the difficulty level is? Do you need to have a culinary background to do it, or could just the regular person be able to follow your recipes? So my goal with my recipes, <laughs> it sounds kind of funny, so my brother growing up, he never could really cook well. (laughs) And I would always have to cook things for him. So my thought process behind my recipes is, can my brother make this? (laughs) And if the answer is yes, then I did a good job. Um, Great. What was that? That's great. (laughs) Can my brother make this? (laughs) Um, I don't want to put recipes out there that no one, you know, might not understand or the the wording behind it is, you know, I have to go look this up on Google. Um, and I'd also don't want to use ingredients that might not be commonly available or cost a lot. Man, we're like speaking the same language here because one of the things that we get feedback on um, as we try to, you know, we, you know, we, where we work and, you know, we've got this podcast and some other things. One, the number one feedback we get is basically, all these recipes are complicated or have ingredients that I don't know what they even are. Yeah. And, right. and, uh, and uh, we actually are working on right now, like a, a default, we, I call it the default two weeks. So like, if you have nothing better to do, here's some super simple recipes you can try. Just start here and you can go from oh, there. No. So it sounds like we kind of align on that. So and we may need to uh, get you some guest recipes uh, when we <laughs> roll that thing out. Yeah. Yeah. So I know we kind of wavered a, around a little bit, so I'm going to ask you a crazy question that has nothing to do with the totally <laughs> off-topic. So okay. peanut butter on your eggs, really? <laughs> um, once again, that goes back to my brother. <laughs> um, he has been doing it forever now, and I, every, every time he's home and does it, I look at him like he's crazy, and I just can't wrap my head around it. And finally one day I'm like, I just have to try it, and it was actually really good. <laughs> so I appreciate that you did that because unlike ketchup on eggs, I still haven't got up the guts to actually do it. <laughs> so would it I'm work all with about ramen? weird combinations and you know weird flavors. I like that kind of stuff. That one I could not. I just couldn't get my head around it, and then I finally did, and I actually enjoy it now. <laughs> oh, so you've like built it into your. Your standard, you you do it all yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah, I do now. <laughs> oh man, another thing I'll have to try. Yeah, maybe that should be a takeaway. 
I'm, I would, I'm assuming it would be the same with, with almond butter since you're, you have a coronary, coronary, since you have a coronary degree. Yeah, um, but he does say that almond butter works well too. I haven't tried that yet though. Okay, PB leg. <laughs> to try something like that. So, um, so like, let's rewind to like you know when you were just starting this. Uh, now that you've kind of been down, you've done some learning curves. If you had to, if you got to talk to yourself when you were just starting the, your keto journey, what what advice would you be giving yourself? Probably not to get too wrapped up on what the scale says. Um, I was really focused on, you know, how many pounds I was losing each week, and then you would kind of hit a plateau, and I just got a little discouraged. While I didn't go off the diet, I was still, you know, thinking, you know, is this going to work? Is this going to work? And I didn't realize, you know, by looking in the mirror that I was still, my body was still changing, even though that scale was not. So, we do you do you mind disclosing for those uh, those of us who I, I know you've had a pretty decent trans, uh, transition. How, how much? Yeah, like like what what has your 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 transition? Do you mind uh, telling us how many pounds you've lost or how many dress sizes or? So currently, I've lost forty pounds and do that in four pant sizes. Wow. Um, so my I'm daughter still, is five, and she doesn't. She barely weighs forty. So you've basically lost my daughter's weight. <laughs> wow, that's that's interesting to hear. I didn't think about it in terms of that. But yeah. <laughs> like, well, thanks, that's John. Thanks, but, <laughs> kind of somewhat insult slash. What, okay, so so well, that's, uh, yeah, yeah. Whoops, sorry. Yeah. That was meant to be a compliment. I don't know. Well, it, definitely was I just I had never thought about losing like a little person size but that's awesome <laughs> well it'd be two of yours right oh yeah yeah it would <laughs> well now that I've completely signed such a I, guy I'm thinking, boy, <laughs> you have like reality on the other side of the table so reeling us back in <laughs> uh so you said that your recipes kind of set apart you set your recipes apart because of your your uh, tagline, can my brother make it? So right. what about like macronutrient stuff? Are you, do you concentrate on on any particular ratio or you just kind of have like a ballpark in your head or how do you know um, your planning when it comes to that? I think once again, my background with culinary helps with that. Um, I have a pretty good idea of ingredients and what's in them. So I don't really concentrate before I make the recipe on, you know, does this work out in terms of keto um, after when I go to the computer and I start entering all the ingredients in and coming up with the macros for it, they tend to always work for me. And if they don't, then I gear it more towards low carb rather than keto. Um, but I think that my background definitely helps me figure out, you know, if I add these ingredients, will it still be keto? So since a lot of people struggle with the, with that kind of statement you made around there with sometimes it's not enough fat and it, it's more low carb than keto, do you have some tricks that you do to dishes to fat fatium fatium them up or whatever work <laughs> um, you're trying to say? Sauces help a lot, um, like creamy sauces. You know, using heavy cream, using a lot of olive oil, um, butter, things like that tend to help um, up the fat in the recipes. Um, also using fattier cuts of meat um, can also help with that. So I was just looking through um, your website or your Instagram page before we started this. And there's two things that caught my eye. So one of them, we've had lots of conversation. I have a really difficult time with cauliflower. I knew it. <laughs> so... I want to eat that because I, I mean, I did used to love mashed potatoes and those sort of things. So is there, is there any tip that you could give to maybe hide the flavor of cauliflower where I would still be able to eat it? Before you answer that question, do you think cauliflower Um, has a taste? I'm I'm using quotes here, a taste. (laughs) So my one recipe for a loaded, I think it's like loaded double bake um, cauliflower mash 
that one I have a lot of extra ingredients in it to kind of hide the um, flavor of it. But also I have found that kind of overcooking it and over whipping it can sometimes release a lot of that flavor that you're talking about. Ooh. Um, and in that Good recipe, <laughs> in that recipe, you know, I've added cheese and some bacon and um, garlic. And so I just think adding a lot of flavors and then over whipping and over cooking it can sometimes help. Uh, you, you basically described uh, like a, one of my go-tos because I do basically a, call, a like a loaded cauliflower, kind of like a loaded baked potato. So I'm gonna have to check that out. Is that what you saw? In, uh, yeah, it was a it was a mash that I saw on there. So a little different because I I'm too lazy to actually mash it and whip it. <laughs> yeah, I what use a food I... processor to kind of you know get it real fine and mash potato like. Yeah, I use the food processor for a lot of things like uh, hard boiled mint, not hard boiled eggs. What's it called when you put the yellow you put all the yolks in there and you whip it up? <laughs> Double eggs. eggs. Those. Yeah, yeah, I use it for that and stuff. And when I do oh. mash potatoes, but I just, it's too much work for me. I'm yeah. lazy. <laughs> um, the other thing that I noticed on your website was the jicama fries. So oh, I, yeah, I tried those for the first time last, or two weeks ago, I guess. Um, first of all, I nearly cut my thumb off trying to make them into fries. So, <laughs> um, but I... I I read a recipe that I should boil them first before you bake them. I'm wondering, I mean, is that how you do it? That it is didn't how sound I that it. great. Um, okay. Yeah, I boiled them first, and that kind of helps release some of the starch that's in there and um, makes them more uh, soft because it's a very hard root vegetable. And then um, when you bake them, they then they'll tend to get a little crispier for you. Okay, so maybe I just did not boil them long enough because they were pretty crunchy still. They yeah, it takes quite a while to cook hickama okay. fries. Um, okay. I would say you boil them for about 30 minutes, and then baking can be anywhere from 30 to 40, depending okay. on how you cut them. So for us, us non-hickama people, is that, is that the stuff that's like a, if you eat it raw, it's like a water chestnut? Um, I would say, yeah, the texture is probably similar. A lot of people I've seen, um, they slice them really thin and use them as taco shells, huh. which I have not tried yet. I don't have a slicer for it, but it sounds very interesting. Do they make them watery? Do they hmm. bake them? No, I think they eat them raw. It, it sounds interesting. I'd be willing to try it. It would be like when you when you go for sushi, but instead of that, instead of the sushi, they put it in that that kind of clear tapioca kind of mm. that stuff's called. I don't know. I'm Again. not a sushi. <laughs> oh man, see that's that's one thing that's hard for me. I I do love sushi, so shish, now I just do. It's really 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 expensive when I go for sushi now because <laughs> I just do sashimi and then don't eat the rice. Or, so yeah, it's, it's dangerous. <laughs> So wow, we walk, we went all over the place. So now we know jicama can we can shave it thin and try to use it as a shell. Oh, yeah. None of us have tried that. Yeah. So, so <laughs> take with it what advice you want. <laughs> but I'm I'm still stuck on the peanut butter and my eggs. You have to try it and let me know. I'm gonna have to try that. Dang it. Yeah. All right, you'll have to make sure I do it because okay. it's not something I would do automatically. Yeah. <laughs> We'll have to we'll have to set a goal and set a deadline. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think you should post a video on your Facebook page as well. Oh. It? oh man, see this is the where you're 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 gonna, you're gonna make me do social stuff too. God, I'm so bad at that. <laughs> there we go. We can bring it to work. We'll video each other eating Wait, the so peanut butter egg. <laughs> you're saying we're gonna make eggs at work? Well, sure. So we'll, we'll do it at one of our lunch and learns. Sure. Company. I could do a scramble. I have a little machine that we can scramble eggs in the microwave. Wow. So for those of you guys tuning in, I guess I uh, look forward to that in the future. Because <laughs> otherwise, John will not do it. I have been I have been challenging him to make his own mayonnaise since the very beginning of our shows. He has still not done it. So is it, are you also going to make me do this? Yeah. Well, I'll make the eggs. I'll just bring it to work, and I'll just make you eat it on camera. <laughs> there you go. Right. 
Um, but <laughs> oh, so she knows I'm lazy. <laughs> so as you can tell, we've, uh, you know, very formal podcast. Here. So if yeah, we're going to, if you're going to kind of rein us back in, we kind of jumped all over the place. Is there anything that you want to you add that we haven't covered or, or, or like maybe some really good pro tips that you could give us that uh, we wouldn't normally think about? Oh gosh, let me think. Um, well, one is I think that chicken um, is off, like off, often looked over um, in the keto world because it's not super fatty. Um, but I have found because it's so versatile that, you know, I've become, I use it probably three times a week just because I can add a lot of different sauces and change the flavor of it. Um, and it's such a cheaper cut of meat as well, you know, for a family on a budget that I don't think it should be overlooked in the keto world. Hmm. Oh, that's a good tip. I wouldn't have thought of that. And yeah, I mean, we, at my house, we do have it every once in a while, but just because my brother raises them, so we kind of, we just have a freezer full of them we have to use before the following year. <laughs> right, so like adding fatty sauces to it and stuff, you can make it keto pretty easily and um, have a lot of different uh, dishes with it. So what is, um, what is one of your favorite things uh, to eat? or make, I guess I should say, do you have a favorite recipe or a favorite? So like everyone knows that I'm a, I'm a beef girl. I love, I love anything that's beef. So do you have a recipe or a, a specific food? Um, so my favorite recipe that I do is my chicken pot pie recipe. Um, I make like a chicken pot pie filling and then I make um, like biscuit like uh, dough out of fathead dough for the top. Um, that's kind of my favorite, like, home-feeling uh, meal that's keto. Um, and then, like I said before, my signature thing is the fathead dough. I've probably come up with close to 30 or 40 recipes now that um, I've used fathead dough for. Um, and it just it has opened a whole world of possibilities for me, and I really enjoy coming up with different things. Wow, so I, I'm intrigued. So just for the record, I've never made it. Oh my gosh, you and are missing. She, she tells me I'm missing out all the time. So, so it sounds like we need to, like, since we're laying uh -huh. challenges out on the air, we need to, we need to do a what do you call it? For, Forty ways to cook uh, fathead dough. We, we, yeah. we need to we need we need to uh, make that happen. Yeah, oh. yeah, I'll probably have to pick your brain on the fathead because I. I have switched over to using a different crust for pizza just because I it's so hard for me to roll that out. Um, so maybe maybe I'll have to pick your brain for some easy tips on how to roll it out because I'm actually uh, scanning through your pictures right now and there's a lot of fathead dough pictures and it's yeah. perfect. It's thin and perfect. Yeah, I've kind of mastered uh, as the fat head dough, um, I use it. Like, I I probably go through so much much mozzarella and almond flour in a week that because of all the fat head dough recipes I do, um, it's just it's opened a whole new world of possibilities for me keto wise, and I just love it. All right, that's what you need to do. A fat head, where it means the like the the bread like online course. A little video yeah. on how to do it and a oh, recipe yeah. book to go along with it. Man, we're go. totally laying out the challenges today. <laughs> I don't know when we're going to have the time to do all this work we're setting up for ourselves. <laughs> all right, so we're, we're running out of time, but I kind of want to recite some of the actionable takeaways because, honestly, I, I picked up quite a few tips. I want to make sure I don't forget them. So, well, of course, the peanut butter on the eggs challenge. <laughs> but... But going back to, I think, the, my favorite statement that, can my brother make this? You don't have a, to have a culinary arts degree to uh, to be keto. That's a, that's a good right. takeaway. And and after the learning curve, it takes about the same time. I think we get a lot of pushback on, it's so complicated, I don't know how to do it. And I think hearing somebody who's a professional kind of reiterate the fact that if you, once you get it down, you're uh, definitely 
not going to take a ton more time. I loved right. your chick, chicken on a budget. That was a good tip. Adding cream and oil to fatten it up. And, man, so what was your cauliflower takeaway? There are ways that I will not taste it. So I, that's, that's going to be my cauliflower favorite. does have a taste no matter what John says. <laughs> I guess it turns out I don't overcook it and I don't overwhip it. <laughs> and I must, I must do it every time. So. All right, so what I miss? Any other takeaways? Because that's actually a pretty good list. Um, and uh, we'll have to uh, reach back out to you and tell you how our peanut butter egg challenge goes. Yeah. yeah. And we'll, we'll see if we can't uh, have a group of people. We'll have to do it at one of our yeah. live shows as opposed to the pre-recorded. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> All right. Well, for those of you guys who are um, listening to this in the podcast, don't forget you can click on the album art. It'll flip over and it'll have all the show notes. So a link to the Facebook page. Um, just a reminder, it's Mama Low Carb and then all of the socials. So what am I forgetting? I don't do How to connect. Stuff. Yeah. So mm-hmm. you can uh, reach out to us at ketoniancorner at gmail.com or you can always go to our website and that will uh, you'll be able to see the recipes that we have posted on our website along with all of our podcasts. Um, and you can also reach us through our website, and that is ketoniancorner.com. So thanks again, uh, Brittany, for joining us. And um, and I look forward to you talking to you in an airport again soon. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having me, guys. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. No, we appreciate the tips because kind of our, our goal is to, if, if somebody can make something actionable and just pr- improve a little bit of something, that's what, that's what we're doing this for. So we appreciate you taking the time out of your schedule to do this. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, and tune in for our recipe whatever video. There you go. Coming soon. All right, thanks again. Bye. Thanks.